If there's one thing I don't want this channel to be, it's a bad influence. I mean, the way I go on about dexterity games, it makes it sound like I endorse flicking wooden discs at things you hate as a good method of just making them go away. Get in a volcano. Get in a volcano. Get in a volcano. Actually, I'm just going to shut this down, not throwing anything at that. Uh, but, but still, get in a volcano, please. But whilst I can't recommend that as a viable solution for any problem you might encounter in real life, what I can say is it's a pretty dependable thing to fall back on if you're looking to bring a good game to the table. We ended 2015 with a good dexterity game. We're going to start 2016 with a good dexterity game. It's Flick 'em Up. Quiet. Flick 'em Up has you and up to nine others taking on the role of cowboys, half of you playing as lawmen, trying to prevent the other half playing as outlaws from completing their dastardly schemes. Dastardly schemes such as uh, robbing banks or poisoning the town's water supply. No tying anyone to tracks waiting for a train to roll over them though. So uh, not a perfect start, but bear with it. Before the game begins, half of you become the good, half of you become the bad, and a varying number of you become the ugly, depending on who's playing, really. Have you cut back to me? On their turn, a cowboy can do two actions. They can move, in which case they replace their cowboy with a movement disc and flick it onto the table. If that disc thwacks anything, then the movement is void and the cowboy has to go back to where they were. If it remains unscathed, however, then the movement is considered a success and the cowboy replaces the disc. Or a cowboy can shoot, in which case they fire a grey disc at someone else. If it misses, nothing happens. If it gently taps someone, then it's considered to have grazed them and does nothing. But if it knocks them out, then it does one hit point in damage. Once a cowboy has done two actions, they flip their hat around to signify they can no longer be used in that round. Once all the cowboy's hats have been tipped over, then the clock on the town hall moves forward one hour to signify the beginning of a new round. And that's pretty much all you need to know, really. I mean, there is the small matter of how you win, but I can't really tell you how to do that, I'm afraid, because that's all determined by the scenario you decide to pick. Bit of a thud. Flick 'em Up comes with this bulky scenario booklet that comes with 10 different schemes with various different objectives, town layouts, and component and rule additions. Now, the rules of Flick 'em Up remain simple throughout, but what I really like about the scenario booklet is the fact that each scenario's tiny rule editions or tiny gameplay editions never overcomplicate the original formula you're given. And you can go at them at your own pace. Here's a stick of dynamite. If it lands close to any cowboys and they take one damage, does it make sense? It's an explosive. How do you put it on the board? You flick it like that, like everything else. Sorry, I've just hit the bank. Hopefully that doesn't go off. The same can be said with the objectives in each scenario. They add a nice degree of variation without ever overcomplicating it. In some scenarios, the outlaws might be actually trying to enter the buildings that surround them, trying to nab all the gold within them. The uh, lawman might follow them in and have tiny little jewels, which are essentially uh, scaled down versions of everything you see on the board right now. They might have to escort a hostage away from enemy territory. It's like... It's like the designers played the Mexican mission map in Time Splitters 2 on all the different game modes and just went, yeah, let's just make a board game out of that. And if that is your design philosophy, then more power to you, my friends. Variation is not Flick em Up's only strength, though. The feel of the entire game is so on point, and part of that is down to the aesthetics, but I honestly believe that most of it comes down to these two components that signify movement. Uh, and bullets. You see, you can't see it on camera for obvious reasons, but these come with a slightly lacquered finish. They're almost slippery to hold, but I honestly feel like they give a real degree of control to all your shots. And I know I compliment other dexterity games by saying, oh, well, if things go wrong, it's, it's, it's really funny and it adds to the enjoyment. But here is the complete opposite. You can predict the path that your movement discs are going to take, and it's kind of satisfying to see them land exactly where you thought they'd be, but it's triply, quadruply, centuply, whatever truly more satisfying to place a bullet directly in front of you, predict where it's going to go and strike down your own. So the quality of control you're given makes it doubly disappointing when you, you miss a shot like that. But it does make it extremely satisfying when you put the bullet in front of you and strike down your opponent. The game makes it feel so good to shoot people. Shall I rephrase it? So, Flick 'em Up gets the dicey exploits. It's a dexterity game, seal of approval. Not entirely sure what doesn't these days. Um, but there are a few issues I need to address before you get your wallet out, and they're ones of practicality. Now, I've seen a few people voice concerns that maybe their table isn't big enough to play a game of Flick 'em Up on because it doesn't come with a board at all. Um, well, our table's three foot by three foot, and we manage just fine. It is a bit 
tight, I will admit, but it, I've had no major issues with it. I especially recommend it uh, if you're playing with kids, partly because their tiny limbs can easily reach across and do what they have to do, but also the difficulty scales down a bit. They don't have to flick bullets uh, so far. So really, it makes the game a tad easier, but again, it's not so much of an issue. It does cause a bit of a problem when it comes to things called duels, though. If two cowboys of an opposing faction are in a building, then they have to duel. They stand off against each other and take shots at one another until one of them takes a bullet. The rulebook states that you need to reserve a small space dedicated to resolving duels, uh, but the problem is, in this case, we don't really have the space to sacrifice. I mean, I'm pretty sure we're playing with the bare minimum as is. Again, it's perfectly enjoyable, it's fine, D don't worry if your table is this small, but if you are in this situation, you might need a smaller table to resolve those duels on, or you can do what we do, which is simply use the lid. Does the job perfectly well. Um, we don't use the laminate flooring that surrounds us, though. Seems like the obvious choice, but the second issue I have to tackle is the surface that you play on. Yes, for the first time in Dicey Exploits history, we'll be discussing wood quality. Okay, I'll say this as quickly as I possibly can, but I do feel like it's important. Our coffee table shares the same slight shiny finish as all of the tokens that you'll be firing out, and I do feel like it's this that helps that gliding, that smooth gliding motion of all the bullets and make the bullets feel like bullets and make you sound like a psychopath as you take people down in a really satisfying way. Let's not do this again. Here in the kitchen, however, we have a table which is pretty much an ideal size for a game of Flick 'em Up, but doesn't come with the same glossy surface. Therefore, whenever we ugh, flick discs, they often stop a little bit short of where we'd actually want them to be. This isn't so much of a problem with bullets, uh, because we just thwack them as hard as we can anyway. They're bullets, they're coming from a gun, but with the movement disc, it can be a bit of an issue, because it won't go exactly where we want it to go. Um, on the other hand, you had to be practically a god of physics to accurately predict exactly where that's going to land. So it's not that it's not a big enough issue to kill the game. The only people I can see are having a problem with are super ultra competitive humanoids who will make a fuss whenever anything doesn't go their way. And quite frankly, you shouldn't be friends with people like that. It's just something that will take a fair bit of getting used to depending on the surface you're playing on. So hopefully now you can make a rational, informed financial decision using your head. But there's still one issue that I have to address and it comes from the heart. Okay, I'm just getting in the middle of you two, all right? Nothing bad has to happen, it's gonna be okay. All right, okay? Okay, so as I made it clear in my Catacombs review last month, in this review of Flick'em Up, I'm loving the recent surge of thematic dexterity games. However, if you want both, and you probably do, and you can only afford one, which one should you get? Because they're both pretty much around about the same price at a rather steep 55 quid. If you're after a big, bulky dexterity game that goes beyond simply flicking things at each other, something with a little bit more depth, then cata Catacombs is your best bet. I wish I put that joke in the last review, flipping out. However, 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 if your only objective to bring your friends together is just to sit down and have a good old laugh, if you saw the Catacombs review and thought that game is just a little bit too stat heavy for your liking, that's okay. We won't judge you. This is your best bet right here, okay? You're both. Great, you're both special little snowflakes, okay? Can I take the guns from you now? You're not gonna hit anyone with that, okay? I'll just tell it. Gee, why is that hot? So Flick 'em Up gets added to the good dexterity game shelf, don't they all? But not only is Flick 'em Up a good dexterity game, it's also a good little toolbox. Once you're done with all the scenarios that come with it, you can easily create your own with all the stuff that you find inside with very minimal effort. It's just. It's a shame there's no room for a train expansion or anything like that. Unless... Yeah, try and dodge this one, you punks!